Well, Craig, awesome. first of all, I mean, you know how big the Collingwood Army is when you get a feeling like this for the prelim. How does it lift the group? Yeah, well, the captain's gone back a bit further. We had to make, make room for him. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's fantastic. We, we've said right from the start of um, you know, this finals campaign that you know we've got a competitive advantage, and it's right here. You know, you, you turn up and you see all the black and white. We love it. Um, you know, kids on school holidays and you know, the roar of the crowd when we kick a goal and, and when we do something well, we, we, we get inspired by that. Um, and internally, we want to we want to take the fans along for the journey. So, um, not that opportunity to do that. Has the week off just allowed you to reset and bring the players back down and the folks that there's, you know, hopefully two games to go? Oh, we're just concentrating on now. So it's the now is, you know, we trained well today. Um, you know, we trained on Sunday. So there's little, little things that, you know, you want to tick off this time of year. Um, you know, getting yourself ready to, for the opposition. We had we had you know a week of preparation, not knowing who who our target was. So, you know, that didn't come until Sunday or Saturday, late Saturday afternoon. So, um, yeah, we got our sights on GWS as soon as we knew. Is it a one for one with Nick and Taylor this week? On the that that looks like the most likely. Yeah. Okay. So you only expected one change at this stage. So how is Taylor? Do you, if you get through, do you expect him to be available next week? Yeah, that's the unknown, Josh. We, you know, we're we're hoping so. Um, yeah, he's progressing really well. It was a minor hamstring strain. Um, what that means is that he's a chance, and so he's. You, you would see the work he's doing. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a race against the clock, but yeah, we've got to get there first. You put, you put your arm around him when he was, when he was having a kick with Ash Johnson. What what was the conversation? Oh, it's his birthday today. Oh. Yeah, he's thirty his birthday. We got uh, his birthday and Jacob Ryan's birthday, and then uh, yeah, Bruzzy's birthday as well. So a lot of September babies. Yeah. You're a September baby as well. Yeah. yeah. It's I'm, I'm, it is. Yeah. Is it big one, a 50th? Yeah. And it's a 50th game coaching as well. <laughs> Stop it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's making me blush. Yeah. You mentioned Braden Maynard. Do you expect that matchup with Toby Green? I think so. He's had a good record against Toby. But um, yeah, we'll wait and see because they, you know, we, we have certain layers of our defence that we'd like to, to match up on. But he's had a good record against him. But he's a quality player and so significant in the way they're playing and they're in great form. So. Um, it'll be a matchup to watch. How much discussion goes into the sub and into who to pick for that player? For that spot. Oh, I've said this before. We, we look sometimes for insurance and then look sometimes for uh, for spark. And um, sometimes you can get a bit of both. I think Mason against uh, Brisbane a few weeks ago looked like he, he gave us a bit of insurance and a bit of spark. So um, Jack Kinnaman's doing a great job in that role. So we'll see what that, how that plays out. What have you, mate? What have you made of the Giants since um, Mother's Day? Obviously, yeah. they've been on a big run since then, and they're pretty formidable against Port last weekend. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Um, you know, they didn't have Taylor, they didn't have Green though, that day. Um, so much has changed. Yeah, they're, they're in great form. You know, I think they've won yeah you know, ten of the last eleven or twelve, whatever it looks like. Um, yeah, they're playing some super footy. We're going to have to be uh, yeah bring our best defensive game to to match their their offense. They have a lot of pace in their front half with Bedford and Daniels. Do you think the balance of the back line that you had last week is the, the right one to combat them? That's a great question. Um, we'd like to think so. You know, that, you know, Melbourne had some real live wires up front and, uh, you know, we're going to have to be on a game. You know, Daniels is a really good player. I think he's underrated. Um, we have to watch out for him. We'll bring our best version to, to take him out of the game the best we can. But, yeah, they're, they're, they're good players. They've got good players across the field. If you went through every player on the field, you go, oh, that, this is a concern. We have team defence, so... So we, we'd like to back that system in. Uh, what well, you made him gone over the last week and a half, disappointing a couple of weeks ago from him, and is he in the plane to be in Uh Yeah, I had a good chat to Johnny only um, early in the week, and yeah, he's disappointed, as he would be. But uh, as a quality human that he is, he gets back to work, and he's trained so well this week. Um, yeah, I just think, I keep using the analogy that you're in the slips and just wait for that catch, and if it comes, be ready to catch it. Goal kicking's been a big thing during the finals. Like a lot of games decided by poor goal kicking. Um, your qualifying finals struggled at the front end in the last quarter. Yep. How much of an emphasis have you had on forward work over the past couple of weeks? Well, Lee Matthews used to say that to fix goal kicking, the best way to do it is kick goals closer in. So, you know, the best version of us is that we move the ball well enough that we get shots closer in and you know, force the opposition to have wide shots and, and long ones. So. Um, defensively, we want to we want to try to create an oval like that, and then offensively, we want to create shots closer to the goal. Do you Just feel like Craig, Sorry, yes. Do you feel like I mean, look at the Magpie Army here now. How much of an advantage will that be at the G? On oh, Friday that's so huge! Uh, it's a huge advantage for us. Like, um, I was involved in a footy club in Richmond across the road, and uh, we played a prelim final years ago against GWS, and the, the, the roar of the crowd when, when you know Richmond kicked their first goal was significant. I've never heard anything like it. That is an advantage. You have to play against that. Um, yeah, you can say it's you know you just play the ball, but we have an advantage, and, and we we want to bring our fans along for the journey, and I'm sure they'll be nice and loud on Friday night.
Oh, you worked with Adam Kingsley at Richmond. Have you been surprised at how much success he's had in his first year? Uh, no, Kingers and I are very similar. He just does a lot more weight than his arms. <laughs> <laughs> he spent so much time in the gym. Uh, no, he's a great fellow. I'm really, really happy for him. Um, I'm not surprised by success that follows him. It's, it's always followed him in his journey. So um, I wish you well, just not this week. Have you spoken to him this week? No, no. I must have lost my number, I think. <laughs> Where do you plan on using Nick yeah. this week? Well, Adam's out, he's more that um, yeah. midfielder half forward. Will we see Nick more forward or could he play more back? Yeah, I think we're going to use him where we need him, to be honest. He might start forward, he might start mid. Um, yeah, just whatever the game needs. It, it's, a, it's a great um, you know, weapon to have when you're bringing back one of your best players. Um, he looks like he's hungry, ready to go. He's, he's, he's trained on and on. Like, um, you know, it's a bit scratchy the first couple of weeks you know, back or last week. and. I think we'll use him where we need him. Can you expect him to have the impact he was having at, at the peak of his powers this season? Oh, you know, those, those questions are hard to, to answer. Um, he's training well. Um, he's missed a lot of footy, so we've got to be conscious of that. Touching on, on the giant strengths, we know how well they use hand you know, take ground. Is it about blunting that, or is it more about exploiting that, turning the ball over and going back the other way? Yeah. Oh, we want to bring great pressure. You know, that's, a, that's in our DNA. You bring great pressure and you know, ask questions of the opposition. You know, they, they move the ball with handball as good as anyone in the competition. Um, so we're going to have to bring great pressure and we'll see what, which one um, you know, comes on top of that. The first 10 minutes against Melbourne, I think your starts and forms have been awesome, but the, the first 10 minutes against Melbourne, what, how do you, what do you put that there? Is that your rev up right before they run in? How do you, how do you get them up and going yeah. for, that, for the starts like you have been? Oh, look, I'd, I'd like to think they'll have zero influence on the way they start. Um, you know, the players are really motivated. Um, they've got a great routine and great belief. Like you, you hit the ground running because you believe in something, and this group's got an enormous amount of belief right now. Have you got Julian Prairie coming back? Well, <laughs> like we love our families. We do. We love we love Julie and we love other mums and dads. And um, but Julie's probably due for a media ban, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Julie. We love you. What about Jack Crispy? I think you played about 80 20 mid forward against Melbourne. Will that, is that some, a role you'll keep for him, or does Nick coming in sort of change the, the dynamic a little bit? Um, oh, look, we've, the system we've had in place has been quite strong, so I don't think we'll, we'll change too many things. We've been pretty predictable to ourselves and, and the opposition, so um, yeah, well, time will tell on that. Do you bring up last year at all? Uh, we, we're going to touch on something today about our journey. Um, yes, last year was part of that, so we'll touch on it a little bit, but. Um, really, it's about right now. What matters right now? Um, do this well, then you know, get on to the next thing. And we're living in that space and make the most of these opportunities. They don't come around too often, and we're really grateful to be in this position. Um, just, sorry, I was going to ask about the, the two young boys. Uh, got a nice surprise in training. What did you say to them pre before? And they were, they were speaks or something like that. Yeah, no, that's uh, it's it's so exciting. And, and again, I, you use the word grateful. We're we're in a position where we can bring you know, people in and have had less fortunate or have had some form of struggle in their life and make it make a special day for those lads. So they'll get it run out on the ground with us and um, yeah, we'll, we'll make them feel special. The captain with um, the wrist injury saw him sort of playing around with it during the session. Is that is that any sort of a concern for him at all? Something he has to manage during the game at all? Oh, I'm, I'm not too sure about that. I think it settled down reasonably well. It was it was probably more sore going into the Essendon game and, and then just lingered a little bit. So. Um, yeah, I don't think it'll be an issue. And just one, I'm sure if you address it, for Braden Maynard, uh, there was so much anxiety around that, we, that, that, that was well publicised. Have you had to talk to him about how he goes about his game and that you still want him to play on the edge? Because I imagine that's something that could play in his mind in the early parts of the game. Yeah, I'd steer away from telling players how to play to their strengths. Um, we would encourage them to, to, to be the best version of themselves. And you know, he's a hard, uncompromising player. And, um, unfortunately, that one just tread on the line of uh, and, and Brayshaw. I still hope he's okay. You know, we, we talk about two, three weeks later. We still care about the guy. Um, we lose sight of that. We move on to the next thing. But hopefully, he's going well. Has Brayden just, sort of moved on from that mentally? He's well, focused now. Yes, it's it's two or three weeks ago now. We've we've had a lot of wood. It's his birthday today, mate. We talk about his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> hope he's having a great day today. Like well, just on the day, guys. Were you always confident to get back when he went down to round twenty one? Uh, no, not not. No, no, it wasn't. Um, there was some concern. There was, you know, when, when a bone has to heal, no one knows what time that's going to be. There's, a, there's an estimation and there's a hope, but still there's a lot of um, things that need to happen. So um, credit to the medical staff and then to him, obviously, to follow the plan and um, he gets back with an opportunity to play. Do you think that might take him? I don't know. I don't know. He did quite well against him last time. Um, he's a hard, hard player to tag, isn't he? You want me to bait him, do you?
Do you want to bat him? It's his eye tag, Nick. Thank you. Guys, this one about, do you think back over the journey um, with Michael Voss and now you're both in a prelim? Like, it's, it's pretty extraordinary to see yeah. how you've done. Yeah, I spoke to Vossi uh, during the week and um, yeah, remarkable, you know, the, the, the year that they've had and, you know, wishing well. And, um, yeah, we've been on a great journey together for a long time, great mates. and. Um, yeah, bring it on.